Hey everyone, welcome back to another video and in today's video we'll be going over a champ 3 juicy one replay and go over 5 tips you can use in your match to improve and win. I hope you enjoy and let's get into the video. Hey everyone, before we get into the video I want to go over quickly the 5 tips that I'll be using in this video when analyzing it. And the first one is rotations and positioning. They are very similar and I'll go over in more detail later. Number 2 is what man are you? Like, are you first man or second man? I'll go over in more detail too. Number three is reading options, like the play, the play that the opponent can make. And number four is counterattacks. So kind of self-explanatory. And the final is speed of play. And I'll go into more detail with that coming up. So with that discussed and that described, let's get into the replay. Alrighty, let's get into this replay. And as this starts, I want to say that the overall uh thing i do want to go over is positioning okay i look really slow for a second but uh yeah the main thing i want to go over in this kind of replay is going to be mainly positioning i have some minutes marked uh of certain stuff i want to kind of attack and go over so i'll do that when the time comes but overall, in this first kind of like minute, this first goal, like when it happens, I'll kind of describe a little bit more. But first off, I just want to go over like the main thing here, positioning. And it kind of translates into rotations as well, is off kickoff here. Of course, we don't play because why not? Why would we queue and play at the same time? So right here, we're doing it's not a bad idea here to go back wall. But we also need to put a little more pressure. It's kind of like the higher rank you are, the more you break classic like rotations and things. The more thing like the more things you can come up with like on a regular standpoint, uh, the more you can break it. Essentially, it's like the the written rules and like English language. You can just break them for some reason. But yeah, main thing here is we want to put pressure on him. I know our teammate doesn't have much booze, but he's not in a spot to challenge, so someone has to challenge. So you can be the first one here to make it challenge, because look how far away he is from the goal, right? And we only let him get closer and closer and closer until he's a scary enough spot away. And our teammate, you know, still grabs booze. So imagine this, but we challenge like right away, we jump off the wall and you fly. Because then at that point, we're forcing something. Like, if we're, like, here right now when he's going for a flip reset, then, you know, you meet the ball, right? But, like, let's say he doesn't go for a reset here and he goes high. You're kind of forcing him to go high. So, no matter what, this is a tough spot and there's no, like, correct answer. It's just, I believe that jumping off the wall here and challenging allows your teammate to pick up more pads and get back post ready to save a possible shot. Which, luckily, his teammate does. And, you know, it goes wide and it goes wide again. I don't know why we're doing this. We're jumping at the play and not with the play. So we create an even worse spot for our teammate by doing this. If we just stay on the ground and we head it to the corner so our teammate can follow, maybe. Boom. That's a better play. Don't know why that happened. Right here, we're doing a decent challenge. I still wouldn't do this like grab boost because where's this where's he gonna go right and if he's like if you look at the boost trail he's using a lot of boost to like stay on this ball which means he doesn't have much boost to continue the ball so i would just like imagine if you wait like right here right he hits it at you you just grab the ball collect it flick it or pass it to your teammate whatever you want to do and boom that creates a better play because your teammate just hits it and hits it hard yet again. They hit it hard, you turn up. And you get them up. So the main thing here, as I said, positioning and rotation. So if we follow the same... If we do the same thing here, we are at 7 boost. I want to make sure we have the correct boost. We have no boost here. Our teammate does something really stupid and hits it really hard. No one's going to follow that up. That's on our team. So we can grab this pad, maybe this pad or this pad, and we can keep our boost up. And then maybe, you know, we can watch where this bounces and then we grab the boost. 
and then we either can fake turn here like return and then we go back and we can cover like let's say we're going our curve is facing this way i'm not gonna face the play we're gonna face oh ball is bouncing there oh fake challenge and then we go back here we follow our pads that can work or because this guy is going for the demo what we can do here is we can like if we drastically go a different direction they lose enough speed to where maybe you don't get demoed maybe you just get bumped or you can dodge the bump by jumping either or because this guy has to jump into you like has to has to otherwise his position is completely for wraps right like it's not gonna be useful and then this guy comes in right gets a free net because our teammate right if we have our eyes on our teammate he's commit unfortunately wave dashed into their net but he's in their net like he's still on their half and now it's a 1v2 against us we have the 100 or like not using it properly like we can especially if we really wanted to we could go grab this boost and like grab boost jump in instantly because this guy's obviously going to be chasing us and if we just jump like right as soon as we get this boost and then this pulse guy takes a shot like i can think of so many options that is better than this because we just slow down and take the demo and of course our teammate's not going to be there because he's on he's inside their net What's he gonna do? And then we go AFK. Because <laughs> why not? Why would we want to play the game when we're queuing the game? We grab the ball here. Like, this isn't bad. Like, there's potential here. Like, this. Uh, the main thing I will say about low GC, champ 3, champ 2, is that there's potential for something. But we don't do anything. And it's also kind of slow. But right here, we have a breakaway. We grab the boost. We take the dribble. If we don't dribble it too well. Like, if we look at it from the opponent's perspective, right? He has the boost. He's shadowing. And by the way, I believe this guy uh, is like, sits in training all day. Or like... There's like a, maybe a higher GC smurf at, at best. Because he does a lot of dumb things that, you know, shouldn't happen, but they happen. Like this. Like if we take more of our time, like we can shoot this behind him because we can bait him to... We also just take too much time here, right? Or like, oh, we take too much time. Like Frosty's back, like he's covering the option that Pulse can't. Or we can just shoot it top left, right? We give ourselves, like, three options and we take it away instantly. Because there's two options. You hit it forward or you hit it behind. Instead of, like, three, if you have it on your car, like, you can take the flick, you can do whatever. But we don't play that. Teammate misses. If I'm going to take a... Like, we're snaking. No reason. Like, I call snaking just, like... We're like making S's with our car. Like our. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. Like we're faking at the post. We can't fake something out that's not gonna move, right? And then we can't get back to it. Like that should be. It should be 1 1 right now, but it is not. That happens, right? We're kind of like panicking and I want to like watch this for like this game also from this guy's perspective because you know possible smurf maybe like just mechanical player like I don't believe this guy should be in this MMR range is essentially what I'm saying because he's making far less unnecessary plays far less mistakes and is just a lot cleaner on the ball and on the play it's like that's after I just hyped him up so much, he does that. But, you know, mistouch, it happens all the time. Almost got scores on it. Scored on because of it. Like, let's say here, he takes it and controls it, right? That's what I would have done. It, like, he's instantly just, like, he's turning. He's not just, like, I'm going to look at the ball. He's getting active. He's going on the ball, right? Which, to me, is a telltale sign that someone is either a little lower or just not where they should be. So like, look at this. We're 
for a little too far up, but the right idea, right? But going back to our main guy's perspective, and the reason why I want to cover this replay is mainly here. We're giving up position instantly, or luckily giving it back for possession, not position. And we're doing like the right thing again. We're, we're going back, we're going wide, we're expecting something out of our teammate, right? If we go here, we grab some more pads and then we turn up or like we turn like to the play instead of returning away from the play. Like the main thing here is like we're turning away, like we're killing our momentum and then we would have to use boost again to catch up anyways. Besides the fact that this guy's covering a pass, like look at where he is, like if the ball is hit. And this is like good realization from Frosty here, like good awareness. Because if this ball goes up, he's like directly where the line intersects. Like, since he goes so low, and this is why I don't like passing in twos as much as I used to. Is because look at like, look how wide this is. Like, if this pass is more like, if this guy t like wise had to turn in and said turn wide. Is because if you're in more, like, that's such a shorter range and like this guy's not covering that. But since like he goes wide our main guy goes wide here it'd have to go up and like be in this general area guess who's there frosty so boom pass is pretty much useless anyways and then we're cutting over across the field because we're like oh it's a pass to me clearly the ball is to me but you know our teammates are like we're not aware of our teammate being there and then we take we don't even take the boost we're kind of just driving around and watching the ball which you can kind of see like because oh wait i gotta be there and then oh wait which i don't blame him for taking this booze it looks like a yummy booze but like we gotta think of our positioning we're forced off the ball luckily that guy misses but then we're just like we're just following the play if you guys know what i mean like we're following the play and this leads us to my first like kind of note is what man am I? And to quickly go over what man am I, it is a very simple thing of, are you first man or second man? What are your roles and did you help your teammate? That is what is what man are you? That's the second thing I wanna go over. Are you first man or second man in this position or second man? So now our question is, what are your roles? Our roles as second man is to like be in position, cover our teammates, like. I guess failure, cover a 50, cover the bad option, while also being in good pos position, a good spot. And then did you help your teammate? What are we doing by doing this? We're driving straight at the opponent when our teammate has no boost? Of course our teammate is going to have to give up the ball. Because he doesn't have boost to follow up the play. And then we're assuming that our teammate can just get the ball, get boost in the air. And we see both of our opponents in the left side of the field. Like, to me, this screams, get in the middle. Be a passing option. Like, Frosty's gonna have to go back or challenge. Like, that's his two options. Go back or challenge, because there's no boost. Pulse can cut off this pass if we go too wide, right? That's why you'll see more and more pros cover something like this by being more inside. More inside lines. Like, higher, higher rank players, even than me, are covering this from the inside, like the close post. If this gets over the second guy, then that's a free net, right? Because then this, the first guy will have to cover the second, right? And then that's the, the switch, right? That's where the first becomes second, second becomes first. Something like that. So if we play this out wide and we realize our teammate doesn't have boost to, like, score this, we should be, like, here on this pad, like, giving him an option. Because then that means only one of the opponents can enter the play, right? If Frosty doesn't go for this immediately, then clearly he's going to go back, right? And if if our teammate here can pass this mid, then boom. That's a one-on-one -on -one now. Or like, commits pulse. like So it's a, a 50 or something. Like, something has to achieve. Like, Orange has to achieve something out of like a 50 or just a beat on the play. Because now our teammate has to go back. He has no boost. Doesn't have to. But he chooses to go back and gives up possession, right? And now since Frosty is full boost and Pulse is behind him, we're like forced to give up the ball mainly because of our positioning. 
Like, what are we supposed to do on this? Like, why are we here? Like, what is our... What's the point of being here? Like, are we going to pass it back? That could be a good idea. That could be a good shout. So we maintain possession. But since we're all focused on attacking, and we would rather die than have a back pass, we throw the ball in possession away to the opponents, who just collect it for free, almost mess up, and then we do something stupid, because we realize we're panicking, and we're like... Because if you just regularly drive at this ball, even with three boosts, you can get a like a cheeky shot off backboard, or like, it chips up, and then... Guess what? Our teammate is in such an awkward spot that he has to cover you. Like, if we look at it from our teammate's perspective here, or the teammate's perspective here, goes back very bad. But he covers the middle. And then you do that, and then he has to, like, be on the ball. Like, it's... To me, it's... Makes too much sense to... Like, like, even just drive at the ball. Like, wave dash, use your boost, and drive at the ball. Don't flip. Because then we're committing further or further away from the play. Guy goes off the backboard. Or just a little fish. And this is the other thing I wanted to go over. Speed of play. And counterattack, right? We see here, luckily... And we're, we should also be thinking in our head, okay, he's using a lot of, like, I can see his boost trail. Not even the boost. Forget the boost meter. I see a lot of boosts being used in the air. Can he pick up 12 from the air? No. So therefore, he's low. That corner boost was just taken. And then we collect the ball. It's covered the boost, but you can see a glimpse at, okay, maybe it wasn't taken. But we can also think to ourselves... Okay, ball goes mid. My teammate's slowly moving up field. Frosty is probably going to either challenge me or, like, try to cough a pass. He does both, like, excellently, pretty much. Like, he doesn't fully commit his car. Like, if we can look at this from Frosty's perspective, like, he's covering his teammate. Like, this is what I want Blue to do. Gets a bad touch, but he instantly is back on the play. Instantly is back on the play covering something. And he's instantly challenging the ball, like, forcing the opponents to, like, if we watch this game back on the orange team compared to the blue team, like, there's a drastic difference between the two. Like, look, at, we're, we're taking our time. We just made two of them commit. No one's going to be there for the mid-pass. And then guess what? Our teammate can just come back and take his time, do whatever he wants, honestly. Like, make the opponents commit a little bit more, even better. Like, look at this. We take our time. What do you what do you guys let me know down in the comment section? What do you think Wisty would do here in this situation? Would he just bang it? Cause I'm not I'm not even sure myself, but like 14 boos, I think you'd panic flick. Panic flick flip at the ball, right? Kinda exactly what Pulse did here. But you know, a lot sooner and without a teammate backing him up. Like We're just we're just focused on the ball here, like we're taking up space. Like, look at that 50. Like, that 50 was just so good. This is a bad idea. But then that goes back to Wisty here. In speed of play. Like, we're kind of just panicking at the ball. Like, this is good. Cover the space and cover that. And also, where are we? Like, in general, this blue team is kind of kind of an L. Mainly because... What are we covering up here? Uh, like, your teammate is probably going to look for pass mid and you're on the sidewall. Like, we we kind of got to think logically here. Like, our teammate's not going to back pass it on the wall. So we kind of have to be on the field in the middle. Absolutely gets, gets faked here. And this is another point I wanted to bring up was the counterattack play. Like, we'll watch it from Orange perspective, because I want to talk about Orange here. Pulls here, covers the net. His teammate there commits for the ball. First man, second man. Boom. There's an opening on the play, and Pulse is instantly there to speed up the play, or be there on the play. Ankle's broken completely. And then 
gets on the ball and scores, right? It's it, it just makes sense, right? Like if we watch it just a little bit more from orange team's perspective. Like that's a rush shot. Look at this. He's back. This is a really tough spot to be in, right? So if we go back to or, or blue team here and we look at it from our main character's perspective here. Mediocre kickoff. Is just watching the play, right? But then he realizes he's in a good spot, right? To go for a dump or a bump bump demo. Gets it. And good job for his teammate for not taking this in the air and going for a double tap for an air dribble. Because there's a good chance, like when the ball goes in the air, all Pulse has to do here is go for a squishy save. But since he doesn't take it up in the air, boom. No squishy save. No save. So that's good on them. We see a little bit more 50s. Unfortunate. But we're good. We're good covering here. And this is kind of what I want to talk about with, like, rotation and positioning as well like it's the higher and higher ranks you go you climb the more precise and more specific you need to be with things so if i'm in whoops if i'm in his position here i'm gonna be trying to because obviously my teammates either gonna get a 50 or get beat so i'd rather come here pad pad and then if it's a 50 and it rolls I'm having my momentum, boom, pad, boom, pad, boom, pad. And like, let's say it rolls out here. Like that's just a turn, turn with an extra 24 boost that I can use instantly if I want to and shoot it to make it speed. Unfortunately, we grab a pad, we grab two pads or go through mid here, go through mid and either cut in because he's going to probably try and shoot here. Or, since you're being here, it can kind of cover back net here. Like, I don't mind the way that he closed it down. It's just we could have a little more boost to our name. And be in a little bit of a better spot to clear, or not clear, but save a lot more things than just the direct shot. That's good that he didn't use boost. And it's good that he did this. I don't know. I just feel like the, the middle... Like, would have been a little bit better because it covers more of an area. But still good save for him. Recovering. Right now, we should be in wait. Not wait, but we should be in save time. Enough time for my teammate to get back and get behind me. Because imagine if, imagine if he doesn't cut this off here. Imagine if... Rossi just flicks it and the guy commits, right? It's 4 1 and it's probably a forfeit. Same thing here. We're just jumping, we're just jumping, we're just going. And you could be thinking, okay. Kind of like stall, stall the play, stall time for my teammate to get back behind me because that's what you're supposed to do. First man waits or like challenges or does something to kind of save time for his teammate, whether that's like delaying a challenge or like waiting for a challenge. Like, either or. Like, right here, we're in front of the play, so... We're forced to kind of hit that back, even if we can't get to that ball. Good job on our teammate for being there. Very... We should be thinking the same thing. Stall time or do something. He did something, luckily it works. Like, we are, our opponent missed. <laughs> and then we get to the end of the game, roughly, pretty much. We get a few good looks, but ultimately, as you can probably see by, like, the bar at the bottom, there is no goal for them. Like, there is a lot of good chances. Like, we're just a little bit faster there, and we hit it off the wall into the middle. A little bit better. We just go wide. Can't make it touch. Another 50. Another pop. Another 50. Boom. Big hit. Weird touch. 
Like, we're not in, like, spots to read the play. Like, there, there's just, like, no coverage of a lot of, a lot of things. But yeah. That's pretty much it. To, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you didn't, ask away down in the comment section. Uh, I'm happy to respond. And if anything didn't make any sense as well in the comment section, go ahead and ask away. I'd yet again be happy to help. But uh, yeah, hope you guys did enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.